Hi everyone, my name is Craig and today I want to talk about the a7S III as a photo camera. I'm also going to dive into Lightroom and show you some raw photos shot with the a7S III and make all of those photos available for download via the link down in the description below. Let's get right into it. With the recent announcement of the a7 IV and pre-orders beginning to ship to those who place orders back in October, I figured this would be a good topic to cover as many people out there might still be wondering if they should pick up an a7S III or an a7 IV, especially if they're a hybrid shooter. So today I want to shed some light on this discussion from the photography side. If you are interested in the a7S III, it's probably because you are a video creator but I think the a7S III's photo capabilities are often overlooked. And it's honestly a bummer because most people who say the a7S III isn't any good for taking photos have never actually worked with raw photos from the camera. It usually comes down to people making assumptions about the capabilities of the 12 megapixel sensor. Let's rewind the clocks for a second and remember a few revolutionary DSLRs with similar megapixel counts. First, the Nikon D3, which absolutely took the world by storm when it dropped. It had a 12.1 megapixel sensor and its photos still hold up wonderfully today. Next is the Canon 1D Mark III, which had a whopping 10.1 megapixel count. This was Canon's flagship model in 2007 and 10 megapixels was plenty. And finally, as late as 2014 through 2016, we have the Nikon D4S with 16.2 megapixels. This camera was, is, and will forever be an incredible stills camera. These low megapixel counts in flagship camera models was a conscious choice made by manufacturers and it had to deal with mainly two things. First, low image noise. Sensor size is really what dominates low light performance, but when cameras have equal sensor sizes, fewer pixels are far better for low light performance. And then second, Lower resolution equals less data to read off the sensor, thus allowing to shoot at continuous speeds faster and longer. Okay, so all of this is an important reminder for those who are quick to judge a camera based solely on megapixels. Megapixels are not everything, and they're usually only a good indicator of how large you'll be able to print images, and most of us are unfortunately not making large canvas prints or shooting for billboards. Okay. Enough about megapixels, let's actually take a look what the raw files from an a7S III look like, and let's dive into Lightroom. Okay, jumping right into Lightroom, we have 15 images that we're gonna be working with today, and they're from a variety of situations. We have an engagement session, we have a behind the scenes music video shoot that I was on, we have a couple photos from a senior portrait session, and then a podcast behind the scenes that I was shooting on as well. So we're gonna take a look at all these. All of these were shot on the a7S III with a variety of lenses, and I'll be sure to uh, acknowledge what lens it was shot with so you know for sure. All of this is native Sony glass, by the way, so you're looking at the best results possible by using native Sony glass on the a7S III. Okay, let's dive into it. The first image here, just a standard portrait of this couple. Um, this is their engagement session. This is Deanna and Noah, and we can see, zoomed into 100% value here, Deanna looks great. I was focusing on Deanna's reaction here, um, and it hit perfectly fine. This is with the uh, 50 millimeter lens at 1.4, and we're shooting at a fairly slow shutter speed of one over one over 60, so one one sixtieth of a second, and it hit super nicely. This is at 300% zoom range as well, and it holds up really well. Let's zoom back out to the full and see it one last time. Okay, moving right along to the next shot. Same engagement session. Here's a cool black and white image of uh, the ring and the ring looks great. I mean, this is incredible detail here. Out of a 12 megapixel camera, this looks awesome. You can see the detail in the diamonds in her ring, and it looks great. There's nothing wrong with this. Let's see the before and after. That's what it looked like, raw, straight out of camera. Here's a nice little edit. I love black and whites, I love contrast, I love things to look punchy, and this looks great. Next shot is just another fun portrait shot, shot on the 50 1.4, and this is a much faster shutter speed, was able to capture that motion a whole lot better. I wanted to show you an image where both subjects were on the same plane, so you could see how um, the entire plane of an image looks, and that focus is great. Their eye levels, you can see um, the focus hit right on that plane, and both of their eyes look perfectly in focus. I think it did a great job. Okay, this fourth image, I wanted to show you it looks good. This is my fault here for missing focus. I hit focus right here on their jacket. I missed her face and I missed his face, but the jacket is tack sharp. It looks awesome. But what I want to specifically show you is that this image, even though it's 12 megapixels, you can still crop. So look at this original image here. I'm going to hit R on the keyboard 
to zoom out. Look at that massive crop. I, I mean, that's probably a 200 to 300% crop. And we see what it looks like right here. And it's sharp. It maintained all of that detail. So don't be afraid to crop if you need to. Again, if you're posting these on social media, there isn't a massive amount of compression that happens on Facebook and Instagram, on YouTube. You will never notice. The only time you're going to run into problems cropping with the A7S III is specifically if you want to blow up a really large canvas print or a massive wall print that you're going to hang on your wall. I would advise keeping all of those megapixels intact and not cropping because you'll retain the most amount of detail. But with an image like this, it looks perfectly fine to crop in a full 200 or 300% and get the framing that you would prefer to have. Last image from the portrait session, I just wanted to show you um, kind of a wider shot. Again, shot on the 50 millimeter 1.4 Sony lens and it looks great. Um, it hit him perfectly here, even from a wide distance. Okay, the sixth shot here is of Damian Lillard and I was shooting behind the scenes content for a music video that he was a part of. Let's zoom in to 300% here on the ball and we can see the texture of the ball. We can see the writing perfectly fine. We see him in the background. And of course, anytime you zoom in, you're gonna see a little bit of digital noise and that's as to be expected with any camera, regardless if it's 12 megapixels or on my Sony A1, if I did this, you would see a little bit more detail in those shadows, in those noisy areas. Um, but I think this image holds up wonderfully. Here's the seventh image and we have another black and white shot, which I really like. I think this image just tells a really great story. So we have some of the extras in the background. We have the artist here. We have Damian Lillard off to the side getting his photo taken with this cool watch shot. We have the director. <laughs> this, I mean, this tells a story. We have the director with his headset off, scratching his head, obviously tired. This is shot on the 16 millimeter. Um, it's the 16 to 35 millimeter Sony lens at f2.8. Couple more shots at 16 to 35. Here's a wide shot. And here's another wide shot at 16 millimeters. And look at this, you zoom in 300%. He looks great. You can see the detail in his shoes. I mean, look at that. You can see his aglets on his shoelaces. You can see the detail in his shoes, the texture on the ground even. You can see like the shadow of <laughs> his shoelace casting on the ground. I mean, that's incredible amount of detail for 16 millimeters. 12 megapixels has not been a problem so far. Here's the last image from the music video set that I want to include. And again, I'm gonna make these raw files available to all of you and I want you to decide for yourself. Is this camera lacking anything for you? Is it lacking sharpness? Is it lacking clarity? Is it lacking megapixels that you wish were there? but aren't. And I can tell you right here, this shot, there's nothing wrong with this shot. And I can easily switch over to video mode to get high quality 10 bit 422 video codecs while simultaneously being able to take stills if I'd prefer. Okay, moving on to the 11th image here is a senior photo shoot that my wife was doing and I was shooting behind the scenes photos for. And specifically with this image, I want you to see the before and after and see how much detail it's retaining in the highlight information. So. This was a massively edited, I probably wouldn't edit this image this way to begin with, um, but I wanted to show you all the detail is there. In her pants, you can see her seams, you can see all the texture in her pants, and then in the sky, all of that cloud detail is still there. There's the before and there's the after. You can see the texture in the sky and it looks really good. Next image is just another portrait. I want to include this so you can see how it handles um, vertical and horizontal lines and this has a ton of lines, leading lines in the frame. Okay, last three images are from a podcast setup, and here's just a detailed shot of these headphones. I mean, look at the texture. This is 12 megapixels, folks. It looks incredible. I have no problems with this image. This is on the 16 millimeter um, Sony lens, the 16 to 35. Next shot, this was shot at 35 millimeters on the 16 to 35, and was just a reaction shot. Here's zoomed in 300%, looks awesome. Tack sharp, hit focus nicely. This has incredible autofocus. You're getting like the best Sony autofocus in this camera that you can hope for. And it's, it's performing incredible. And then here's just the last shot to finish out with another um, portrait from the podcast session behind the scenes. And we got both of them pretty much in focus here. This is at 2.8 again. This is at 3200 ISO. And I'm really impressed with how this camera performed. Again, all of these photos are available for you down in the description below so you can see what uh, this camera is capable of producing as far as still image quality at 12 megapixels. If you found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Much love.